did see in game number one that Echo took advantage of. I want to see RRQ take advantage yeah. of it in game number two. Only for the Eve. It's a clay special, but maybe yeah. against a team like Echo where you want to take control of the tempo. Maybe you don't go for those passive type of heroes. Maybe we give Clay a proactive hero in the mid lane, maybe a Farsa perhaps, or a, or a Lu or a Lilia, right? So that they can dictate the tempo themselves. We'll see. So far, the Frederick, the 1-1, one, one, um, the Glue, these three heroes that we said that will be uh, constantly banned in this game. I think you ban out the carry as well, if you're Arc. You don't give Ben Cutie that yeah. comfortable hero. I was gonna say, that's what it's looking like, right? You kind of have that decision, Whoa. they don't. So this is... I would say 99% going to be a carry here. Yeah. Right? Let's expect it. I've been waiting. It's carry. Okay, it's carry. So this is Eve and Yu Zhang. If there are RQ uh, Hoshi, hopefully they are very comfortable. Well, they are, but they are two great heroes. To oh, counter that out. There you go. Wow, called it right on the dot. Eve and as well as Yu Zhang here. R7 is going to have a lot of work on his hands because, again, it, it does boil down to whether or not he can actually catch uh, Benny yeah. QT with the Petrify and then look to go for the full combination, yeah. chuck her down to half HP maybe, and that would be ideal for the Correct. rest of the team to kind of clean them yeah. up. But Winds of Nature is such a powerful item. It, it's rather frustrating for backline divers to deal with such a simple counter. Oh, oh. Cho. On top of that, Echo going to get their hands on this Cho pick, which we know does wonders in the hands of Yaoi, but also the Grok is there. The quick response on the other side, it's RQ taking up the dig. I mean, in the presence of what? Two of the greatest like crowd control <laughs> heroes out there, the Cho and the Grok, pick up the dig and then you're fine. Does it look like an RQ Hoshi hero though? That's the question. Because again, they want to be aggressive. Unless they utilize this uh, Diggy in an aggressive manner. Uh, I think they absolutely can. And now that they know that Grok yeah. is probably, he could go, uh, he's most likely going to go into the EXP lane, I would assume at this point, but I'm going to hold my breath for a second because <laughs> based on what we're seeing that's being banned here from RRQ, I wouldn't be too surprised if they do decide to ban out the Lilia yeah. and then really minimizes what that's Sanji right. can play. He might have to just default to the Kagura. That's right. But then again, for RRQ Hoshi, what they will have problems about is that their marksman pull hero pull will be will be um, diminished now with a fanny ban late into the game. Pretty surprising. <laughs> Are we seeing a Claude or maybe a, a Leslie ban from Echo? Oh, it's a Claude ban. Yep. So yep. what's left for Skylar then? Uh, unless we see something new like we did in the couple previous days, right? Where we yep. saw Melissa, Moscon. Yeah. Uh, you have those options because uh, a lot is banned out here, so really it's kind of up to what position you yeah. want to allow Skylar to be in, right? When you have this digging, when you have this Eve, you have to play around that and allow your gold lane to shine, especially across from you as a carry who has been dominating in terms of Marshman picks, gold lane picks, and you know how much she's going to be shredding yeah. those initiators. Oh, here we go, okay. the next lock-in coming in from RRQ. It's, it's going to be Karina. Okay, I like it, I like it. Oh. At least Karina can get on go top Barrett. of the carry. Oh. Uh, ah, finally, finally. Okay, okay, they're shaking things up. I was okay. expecting the Barracks too. Hilda as well as the Valentina. I'm surprised that RRQ didn't pick it for themselves, the Valentina in particular, but nicely done. I think Echo, yeah. this is looking like a really solid draft. Yeah, is this a Cho jungle or a Cho jungle, jungle? Most likely. Unless they decide to flex the the show, right? But I, would, I think it's a uh, show jungle hey, myself. Here's the proof that oh, I'm still okay. Alive. Oh. Well, we haven't talked about Brody much. Uh, I would say that it's rather 50-50 in terms of Brody alone, right? You really need to be able to scale up. You really need to be able to get your marks off, and then the torn apart memories. The damage can be great, yeah. but still, like we, what we saw, you could say the same thing about Beatrix last game. Damage can be phenomenal, but if you can't actually get in range, you can't get the targets you need to. That's where it struggles. I guess for the side of RQ Hoshi, they now have to play the RQ, show, RQ Hoshi way where they are very aggressive. Don't let this composition coming out from, uh, from Echo to build up when it comes to the momentum and the farm. Carry will be a problem in the latter portions of the game. They have to make sure that this Brody Karina duo carry should output the damage in the early to the mid game. Well, we're going to find out in just a couple seconds as we're loading up here. Again, Echo taking the first blood in the series. Best of five, Land of Dawn beckons. And we're jumping into game number two. All right, here we go. Let's see how game two is going to present itself here, especially with the way the lanes could possibly end up turning around. Um, I'm a little worried because, again, 
it really depends on where Yaoi kind of wants to go. He could technically help out a lane. He could technically instantly look for these invades. But I think overall, it's better to help out that laner because Brody is going to bully Benny QT for a majority of this game. Yeah, how do you feel about that, Wolf? I mean, especially with those matchups, even Carnal TZ on this Cho, is there, yeah. are they going to get that much value out of it or are they going to be relying more so on Yaoi to just cause havoc? Yeah, I think that Carnal TZ is more like a, he, he's going to be the frontliner. This Cho will not be like a like a sniping Cho with those flickers <laughs> because this is a retribution Cho. So you're kind of first in and then Sanford and uh, uh, Yaoi will be the ones to kind of give up, uh, find the better targets. For example, Yaoi can just skip the front lines, get to the back lines, find Clay, and then pressure those backliners for RQ Hoshi instead of like Cho looking for the better targets. Oh, but the bot side, R7 might be in a little bit of trouble. It gets full hit by the power of nature called TZ. He's going to hit four off of this. R7 might want to get out of there for now, but Albert on the opposite side of the map already just hitting his level four, just power farming his way. Let's see how Echo is going to respond as Turtle's coming up in 30 seconds. Yeah, Albert farming quite quickly here, expected with a jungle emblem. Yup, and oh, Cartesi instantly making the play off to Clay so far. Forcing out the flip up and instantly Albert able to respond. Shadow Dance looking so very good. First blood falls into the hands of RRQ. Great idea coming out from Echo, but unfortunately, RQ Hoshi are prepared for it. Clay even had the flicker back then, so that's why that play was questionable, kind of questionable for Echo. Surely you will have the damage, but knowing that Eve does have the flicker, it's too much of a oh. risk. What a Oli, stun. Is he still alive here? Skyla might actually get the trade. Oh. Now he survives with just one HP. Nicely done. On the opposite side of the map is Echo. Start the turtle. R7 Black Dragon form. Sanford instantly getting the knockoff onto Albert, but it doesn't really matter as the real one manipulation has forced them out. Echo has got what they want. Petrified from R7 is going oh. to turn it around, but no. Way of the Dragon kicking the Black Dragon underneath the turret, securing the kill and making sure Sanji's life is worthwhile. Oh, Sanji with a stolen times, uh, times journey. The entire turtle fight of RRQ Hoshi is based on the fact that they have to be the ones to stun up Echo. They have what? The dragon form, they have Eve's control, but that was completely nullified with a stolen Diggy ultimate. And RRQ even lost the retribution battle as Kong TZ and Sanford just made sure that they zone out Albert all the time. Turtle fight is what Echo really banks on in the knockout stages. RRQ has to be able to win those turtle fights, to win those even lord fights later on here. And as you even saw a glimpse of the items, you see that already Benny Cutie locking in that Corrosive Scythe, going to be trying to farm up. A lot of attention here, top side though. Well, let's see how they're going to play it out. Cloud TC might be able to make the play again, but Albert is ready for him this time with 4v4 up on this top side and turtle coming up in 47 seconds. Looks like nothing's going to happen for the time being. Wait, Yaoi? Oh, no, they back off here. Be very tense now for RQ. We did say that they need to control the tempo of this game. They have to be the ones to get out of the laning stage with a better economy. But it seems like Echo with just one turtle fight, they now are controlling it. It's not over though. RQ Hoshi, if they find an opening, come the second turtle of the game, maybe they can snowball out of that. But otherwise, Echo will just take over the game. Speaking look. of Snowball, RQ ranked yeah. first in damage dealt per minute? Wow. I wasn't expecting that, honestly. I wasn't either, Same. but even when we got a look at that little hexagon graph thing, I mean, you could, in the stats, you could see that they love those team fights. And even the fact that the journey they've had up to this point, this matchup with Echo, they've had to go against some of those more aggressive teams on the way, right? And so they've kind of adopted this playstyle for RQ, whether it's that scrappy, aggressive playstyle or even that utility kind of objective based. Now that's the thing, this is the fight for them. And still, a lot of this focus here on these neutral objectives early on, Turtle, quite low. Yep, so low. Real world manipulation is already up, but the time journey is spent by both sides. Black Dragon Form is in. R7 is waiting for the opportunity to jump on in for the Petrify. Fight one, instantly comboing with Albert. Shadow Execution is looking so very nice right now, but Call TZ still has his retribution, looking for an opportunity. Reverse time is going to send him back, but it doesn't matter. They find that turtle. That's exactly what they have to do, right? RQ, if they can grab a kill, great. But if you can at least get those objectives where you start getting that favor in your advantage, allow yourself to allow Skyler 
Hell, even yeah. Clay to come online faster this game. That's best case scenario. Let's see how this all goes. Yeah. Items being picked up here, Wolf. We, we did say that RQ Hoshi needed to control that second turtle. They have to take it. We put a lot of emphasis in that, and that's exactly what they did. That's why now they have equalized. They now have the advantage. And this is off of Vin's old, uh, usage of the ultimate as well as Clay. The angle that he utilized, the real-world manipulation, put Sanford in a very bad spot because Sanford had to use the wild charge. Surely it was uh, able to attack Clay, but of course Clay will not be stunned up. Will not be able. His ultimate will not be cancelled because of that. And as a result, you have uh, Echo not having a frontliner already with him being taken out by Archeoshi. This is a difficult thing for Sanji to decide, right? When you're running this Valentina, you've got pretty. You've got great three options across from you, right? Do you take the time's journey, the real world manipulation, or maybe even that black dragon form? And that's tough, but now you can see RQ, knowing this minor advantage they built themselves, they're gonna keep pressing the issue here. Now they have one turret down as well. They can work around with that space, but still, this also allows Skylar to continue to farm up with somewhat of a safety measure. And if Vin continues to protect Skylar, this is the best thing that can happen for him right now in this portion of the game. I think for the most part of it, right, bottom side, R7's got to be careful here. If he jumps on forward, Benny QT is going to kill him. So now they're dividing and conquering, three on top side, two on bottom. Oh. Sanford finds an angle for a flicker wild charge, which oh. almost resulted into a kill. R7 is still alive. Black Dragon wants to get on out of there as tier one falls. Tier two is the next oh, to drop. Man. I was just about to say, there was a lot of focus on Arkyoshi up top lane. If R7 keeps himself alive and defend the turret up down bottom, that will be a favorable change for Arkyoshi. And boy, oh boy, R7, he did not fail us. Even with the flicker usage coming out from Echo, he's able to get out of there. Yeah, but with real world manipulation already used in the mid lane, this turtle will go over to our RQ Hoshi. Now developing a lead for themselves. Is this the momentum? Is oh. this the turnaround? Clay ends up dying to Benny QT already. Sanford with power nature fights the wild charge. No, he instantly uses his all to get him out of there, but it's timed out. And now he's getting kicked back by Woods. By the way, in the dragon, Yaoi is able to secure the kill, but Car TC is able to get the trade. Yaoi's the next, should be the next. Ball. No! As R7 doesn't pick him up, Skylar with no! the auto! No! He hit the tower twice! That is a <laughs> disaster there for RQ. I mean, they found a couple, a couple setups and everything else, but they couldn't capitalize to make it even further in their favor, Wolf. A very scrappy fight from both teams. You saw, however, Benny Q did not scrap himself. Finding Clay, even after the flicker, because of the fact that Clay kind of reacted a split second later than he should, he was taken out by the by the uh, projectiles coming out from Benny Q. Eventually, Carl TZ wanted to go for Vin. Yeah, surely they did for some time journey as well as the flicker, but man, they exchanged for a kill. And Carl TC dying twice already in this game. That's not good for Echo. Oh, the damage coming in from Skylar as well. Yeah, picking up right, right there that moment before he popped that torn apart memory. He picked up the Malefic Roar. You can see it, right? Skylar's in a comfortable position now, has the items that he needs on this Brody, can continue to put pressure wherever he decides to be. You see Vin and Clay parking themselves a lot of times around him because if anyone gets trapped in that death box, it's going to be tough for them to deal with. But still at this point, RQ now a little bit of a comfortable lead to work with. Can they transition to this into a first Lord pickup? Oh, they should. It, it's imperative for the side of uh, RQ Hoshi to take care of that Lord again. Echo does have good scaling, but RQ Hoshi, they do have a big advantage already. You can see and feel Skylar now with his power spike. At nine minutes in, it's the mid game. He, we know that the weapon master Brody is gonna pack up a punch. It's something that RQ is utilizing right now. Ooh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's it. No, he gets that. No way he gets that. But now, with no shadow memories here, Alt Z may have a little bit of difficulty to getting on in. It's been forced to put her on out of here as Sanford is able to get some good damage for the time being. But that's gonna be Lord. Time journey already being used, but Skylar. instantly dying over to Saji. And Saji ends up getting traded back. Skylar gets kicked, and oh. now with him dead, this allows Benny to keep on going forward. He doesn't care anymore, but Albert is running off crazy. They fight it a three for two trade in favor of RRQ. How did did Skyler survive that? What a play there. And also a misstep by Echo. They couldn't capitalize on that kill. Benny Cutie was out of that fight. 
And now it's RQ driving down with his momentum. Well, the way that he survived there was great. And he didn't panic. Also, I would like to credit, he touched the Guardian Spire. This is high end Dragon Rock with a lot of like attack items. That's why even the Guardian Spire would have taken him off. Instead of like fully backing down, he actually stopped for a bit so that he will not be hit by the Guardian's barrier materializing in front of him. Skylar is cracked. Oh, they are just, they're going so far right now with the momentum. Faltizi getting a good kick onto Diggy so far, but here comes the Black Dragon Corn to zone them off. Faltizi is stuck, he's oh, trapped, oh, oh. he's dead! And now the rest of the team is going to be hitting onto the inhibitor. The Lord is already down with the real world manipulation. Looking to turn it around, time journey to get his team out of there. RRQ have got what they want, and now they back off. And now it's RRQ's time to play with this momentum in their favor, and they're doing exactly that. Wolf. What did this last couple minutes here transition? It's only 11 minutes into the game. How's it looking for RQ? Oh, definitely looking good for RQ. This is their power spike, as we talked about. But then again, we also look at the other components of the, their composition. With a Divine Glaive available for the Eve, who opted to go for the Penetration Boots this time, Clay will be hurting a lot of Echo. Despite it, like, we're looking at the real-world manipulation, you don't really look at the damage that it outputs, but with all of the items that that Clay was able to get, he is now going to be a threat. Look at that though, Queen Twings coming up from R7. And at the same time, you know, as we get ready for this next pretty much push, or maybe it's the next Lord here, what does Echo have to do to get back into this game, Wolf? I mean, they're yeah. down of 5,000 gold. They've only got two turrets. RQ yeah. owns their side of the map. Well, they have to find a way to kick R7, or uh, Skylar, I mean, into their favor. They have the damage of Medicuity already. They have the items that they needed. But the fact of the matter is, they are not finding good jumps onto Skylar. I don't think it's that easy as well. Like it's a lot of not, it, it really not. just comes down to Carl Teasy and Sanford. They're the only people who can really do it. And even Sanji, whatever he takes, he's going to get punished. Like the Black Dragon form seems like a good idea, but considering how far ahead RQ is right now, it's oh, disgusting. Yeah. The biggest thing that was just picked up here by Benny Cutie is that Wind of Nature. You mentioned right. it earlier, Gideon. It's a strong item, right? And that can actually turn the tide of these team fights if they're able to allow oh. Benicuti to stay alive. Conceal play coming out, but they're just kind of scouting around here. They know that they don't have oh much vision. Goodness. Wow. You can hear the roar, by the way. Vince, Vince Diggy does have like Divine Glaive. And with just two, like, two time bombs, he's able to put Kautizi down to 80% HP. That's a tank. Uh, this guy's, the, 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 time, the, the time bombs, <laughs> they hurt. They, hurt. they really hurt. It's Look shocking. Wait, is this an engagement we hear? See, oh, Sanford, he had an opportunity. Really good Guardians rare, but no follow-up so far. Call TZ trying to get Woo. into the Lord Pit right now as R7 begins it. And now, RQ, they secured the Lord but now the fight has already begun. The Black Dragon form has to steal the real world manipulation there. Time for many QT. Winds of Nature ain't going to protect them long enough as the rest of our RQ chase them down. 5-1, five 5-2, one, five it's Albert. Four for nothing in favor of RRQ. Sanji, just hide. Don't show yourself. He's oh. out of here. Skylar almost dying. Torn apart. Memories oh, hit. No. And Albert, he yeah, wants it. Give it to him. Give it to him, Sanji. One HP. He's not <laughs> done. He heals back up just in time. Man, Albert wanted that kill, man. Oh, he was damn. going in deep, but still. It's a push from RQ. And now the real one manipulation is out to clear the way. It's time for tries his best. No, he gets pulled back. And now the Lord is in. Kaltizi tries his best, but Skylar puts the final nail in the coffin of this game. GG well played. Over for RRQ. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a series. We got a series. We got a series on our hands. It's 1-1. One, one. This time around, it's RRQ with a dominant game here against Echo. And two important components on the winning recipe of RQ Hoshi. First, Skylar's Brody with the Weapon Master opting to go for maximum damage, winning, or at least evening up in the laning stage and act being activated in turtle number two. The second important component, it's an egg. <laughs> it's an egg. <laughs> the digging was a problem this time. You see the time journey usage in the turtle number two allowed for them to uh, just hold their ground and win the turtle fight. Eventually, in the latter portions in the mid game, Divine Glaive and Enchanted Talisman with an Impure Rage Diggy, the Times Bomb, or we call it the Bumps Bunny in the Philippines. Yeah. They hurt. They do hurt. <laughs>
the bomb's money. And also he had what, Impure Rage, right? That's right. He's using that so he could just keep spamming them, basically, right? Whether it was for vision or damage. Yeah. And it just whittled down Echo. And they really didn't have an opportunity to even get in line, right? Yeah. And we were wondering, too. Now, now the big question, and I can't wait to hear you know, what the analysts have to say, but this Yuzong pick, man, it is strong for whichever teams <laughs> decide to take it. That's and also right. Brody actually having a great game here, this time for Skyler, working out really well for him, able to just kind of pop off exactly what they needed to do here. Check it out, right? That is going to be the celebration because strong, strong game. It's payback time for the Kings as they secure game two. I think RRQ has really, you know, kind of cleaned up their gameplay a little bit. Their laning phase is a little bit better. Everybody is kind of on the same page of what the plan was supposed to be. And overall, I would have imagined that, you know, R7 was probably going to make those aggressive moves again. No, this time a little bit more reserved, a little bit more calm and collected. But this does show the beauty and more importantly, just the power of a Petrify. Even if you're locking somebody down for at least 0.5 seconds, the rest of your team, and especially when Albert's jumping through, oh my goodness, you just lose track of him so yeah. fast. Uh, you, you've been a time that you can see uh, coming up from R7. He waited for the, those moments where the stolen time certainly will not be of uh, full effect already. He's timed it so well. And this is because of the fact that they are, have so much farm already in the early stages. Additionally, you can see the times bomb, be, uh, the, the, bumps, uh, the bumps bunny usage <laughs> coming out from, uh, from Vin. It's more about like stopping the Grok as well as the, the, the Hilda, which is weird yeah. because they pick up the Hilda after they already saw the Diggy. We know that the Hilda wants to run around. And with all of those uh, time bombs, it's difficult to find a footing around the territories that they wanted to control because they're poked heavily of that Divine Glaive and Chatter Talisman Diggy. Yeah, it was basically too hard for even Echo to find space to work with across the map. I mean, that's kind of what happened here to the point where at one point they didn't control anything, right? Everything was just RQ, everything was in their favor, and it was tough to deal with. But before we have it breaking down, broken down more, we gotta mention the M4 pass once again. It's available now, complete all active tasks, and you'll reach level 75 at ease and for free. Log in now, exclusive rewards like the Beatrix Light Chaser, Beatrix Stellar Brilliance, and the M4 Beatrix figurine are awaiting all of you watching now. And don't forget the hashtags, hashtags, Mobile Legends, bang bang, hashtag MLBBM4, hashtag dare to be great. And lastly, but not least, the M4 Battle Night goes live this January 21. Expect loads of events and rewards for grabs in game. First off, complete battle tasks in game on January 21st to get a skin choice chest. You can choose the skin you like most from the chest, and aside from that, battle bonus awaits you on the same day. Play matches, and you'll get team star protection for three matches, double star raising points, double protection points, double EXP, and double BP for five matches. We're not stopping there. Free access to all heroes and loads of epic skins will also be available that very day. Save the date, log into the game on January 21st, enjoy the match, and win tons of rewards. Let's all celebrate the M4 Championship together, including with our friends. And with that being said, I think we are going to be hearing from the Ooh. analysts stand here on what they thought about this game. And I'm wondering, too, if they're really going to point out that Diggy pick because it caused a lot of havoc. I think it will be a pivotal uh, pick in game number three, actually. Diggy the Yuzhong. I think there's, that, that will be a little, there will be a little bit of uh, shift into those two heroes come game number three because they really look strong in the previous game. Well, let's find out. Analysts, take it away. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Didn't I notice a mood shift in the last game, ladies and gentlemen? From the two gentlemen who were sitting right next to me, and the one looked really happy, and one was uh, nodding the whole game. So, uh, yeah, what's going on, Mirko? Well, honestly, let's start with the drafts, right? The draft was, honestly, in my opinion, what made RRQ win above, obviously, their execution that was pitch perfect, too. Uh, here. Firstly, the Brody pick was so good, and the way they utilized the Brody pick is they understood the Brody carry matchup is a winning lane for the Brody. So they kept on going to the Brody lane, getting him ahead, and when Skylar gets ahead, you can see how much damage he was able to do, how much farm, and even how much of a beast he is sieging turrets down on the Brody. Absolutely, and I want to point out Brody's item, right? This guy has a attack speed item. Leo, I mean, I understand this is the game that you also were nodding the whole game you were analyzing. Tell us about the attack speed item on this Brody. In addition to winning the lane, the fact that you can just let out those stacks so much faster, and the fact that Echo have layers upon layers of engage, allows for Skylar to just deal so much damage to Echo's front line, which again, was set up early on, right? They, they picked up the Cho in the first half, 
and then I don't know, but we can only really imagine what was going on in the minds of Coach Treb and Coach Tick and the rest of the team, wherein they suddenly said, you know what, Yowie, give it to Carl. Pick up a Hilda, and then we'll go from there. We appreciate the effort, right? We appreciate the concept, but exactly what happened in game, in this 14-minute game was, Echo were trying to do two or three things before everything filled uh, up for their side, and then RQ were just saying, oh, you know what? Come in, come in, come in. That's how. You know, when you're mentioning that the cast are also talking about the Diggy pick, right? I think the Diggy and the Hilda love and hate relationship. Why don't you go ahead and talk, talk to us more from the team fire participation table? Well, total assist, forgotten one, that's Finn, right? Everyone th thinks Finn is like that flashy roamer, can go for those crazy flashy heroes to change the, the pace of the game, but hey, it turns out he can be Oh My Vin too, right? And this game he showed it with Skylar, Brody, and Vin. Funnily enough, Skylar is good friends with Ohev, right? And yesterday, Guess what? Ohev played the Brody 2 up against Echo. So maybe taking a book, well, taking a page out of Blacklist book there to get a dub here on Echo. When you have a lineup that puts up a box as amazing as RRQs, you have the real world manipulation, you have the threat of R7 going into the back line, and then you have the time's journey that can at least push back one for sure and then save the Brody. The Brody's having a great game. So I love how Albert here was just used as cleanup. And then again, it put Carl DZ in a weird spot wherein he has to do so much that the threat of the Karina being in any of the bushes nearby where Echo might be it is just too much. And again, that's what made this game a clear win for RRQ. Yeah, and I think RRQ is a team that known to do their homework that we talked about in the last series. That diggy pick was so good because it forced the challenge to the jungle and it didn't seem to work out so well, right? Let's take a look at the MVP to go to Albert on the Karina. The baby alien strikes again, right? A lot of people were saying, this man's finished, this man can't red tree. Well, guess what? He proved the world again, one to one now up against Echo, one of the tournament favorites. Again, Albert, sure, in terms of flashy plays, he didn't make a lot of that, but he was consistent throughout the game. Getting, well, becoming the front line, a solid front line for RRQ, setting up a whole lot of plays to be enabled for the side of RRQ, and guess what? Also acting, like you said, as a cleanup hero or a cleanup player in a lot of these fights that are going super long. Yep, that last item, I can only really guess, might be a Thunder Belt, and this is exactly how you play Karina. 10 out of 10 times, I'm not even gonna give you that one, you build tank Karina. Mage Karina, just leave that for rank here in the pro scene, here at the world stage. You watch the way Albert played the Karina here in game number two, and you see in the first five minutes, again, you need to farm up. You need to farm up, and then maybe once you have your tough boots, then you can try to engage, because really, as soon as you get those kills, and you weave in and out, in and out, and you get your farm in the first five minutes, you're up for a good start. What we see from Albert here is the heat map, or right, the rotation, he cleared the jungle, go to the objectives. Most importantly, he was a front line to give vision for the entire team. And he also, I think, even though he's building full tank, he was doing a lot of damage. You saw him getting first spot over there in that game. I mean, walk out through the highlights here, Marco. Just shows the base damage that Albert really has on the Karina, right? And this is what I want to really point out. In the heat map we saw it, we're going to see it here again. Albert, he rarely, or even, I guess we could kind of say never ganks. He's all around just farming, invading the enemy jungle, getting a lead for himself, and then transitioning it over towards that mid control so that they can control the neutral objective. On top of Skylar getting those sieges down, Yu Zong being such a good weak side uh, hero, on top of that, our seven is on that hero. He knows exactly how to utilize that, just like Sanford in game number one, how to get out of these sticky situations, and in the end, that snowball of neutral objectives plus structure taken was able to get RQ to a 6,000 gold lead. And it's that 6,000 gold lead that told the whole story of how, I'd say, layered Echo's approach was. For them to solve problems, they had to draw several lines throughout different situations. And in that last team fight, you saw how Sanji needed to get real-world manipulation, how they had to put Benicure in the right spot, and how Carl Tizi needed to...